So if you have a vehicle and you think you have a bad engine control module, I thought I'd go over the symptoms of a bad engine control module and how you go about telling if it has failed. And so first of all, what is the engine control module? Well, the engine control module is basically just a computer that controls all the engine functions. So it's gonna be taking inputs from different sensors located on the engine, like the cam sensor, the crank sensor, different things like this. It's gonna calculate all this information and then it's gonna control components on the engine, like fuel injectors, the idle air control valve, different things like this. And so when an ECM fails, all the symptoms are gonna be related to how the engine's running. And the symptoms are really gonna vary because it's gonna depend on which control circuits got burnt out on the board if it has failed. But the symptoms are all gonna be related to how the engine's running. And some common reasons that the ECM can fail is gonna be things like there was a shorted wire on a sensor or something like that. A shorted wire on one of the sensors can damage that ECM. If the vehicle was recently jump-started and it was done wrong, this can damage that engine control module for for example, if the battery cables were reversed, the polarity was mixed up, that could damage that ECM. Also, sometimes the vehicle that's given the jump, it might have a high capacity alternator that's putting out a lot of juice. And when the vehicle with the dead battery starts, this can cause a voltage spike that basically goes back to the ECM that could damage the ECM. That's why it's always a good idea that the vehicle with the dead battery, as soon as it starts up, you remove the cables right away. But if the vehicle was jump started wrong, that can cause issues. Another thing that causes these to fail is that there's weather stripping that goes all the way around them and seals them up. This helps keep moisture out. And if that weather stripping's gone bad and it's letting moisture in, then that could cause issues and cause the board to malfunction. It's also fairly common for these to get bad solder joints or things like this because these boards, especially the ones that are located inside the engine compartment, they're constantly heating up and then cooling down and then heating up and then cooling down. And this constant heating and cooling can cause bad solder joints and things like this. So bad solder joints is another common reason for these to fail. And so what would be some symptoms when the ECM fails? Well, it's very common for the dashboard lights to either just completely go off or to light up like a Christmas tree. Very often, you'll just get a lot of lights on your dashboard. This is very common. Also, the engine is just going to behave very erratically depending on which components have failed inside of the ECM. And this could be anything. The engine could start and then stall out. The engine might not be starting at all. It might run, but it runs really badly. It might not want to idle or something along these lines. But basically, there's going to be some kind of problems going on with the engine. If you have a scan tool and you could scan the computer, you'll get lots of communication codes like U0100 or U0101. That's very common. Sometimes a scan tool can't communicate with the ECM. So you plug in a scan tool and you try to communicate with it to read codes or whatever, and it won't communicate with it. And sometimes you can't erase codes. So you try to erase codes, but you just can't erase them. You can't get them to clear because the scan tool is not communicating with the ECM. And so how can you tell if the ECM failed? Well, a very common thing that many mechanics do is that if you start the engine, you can go and like just tap on the ECM and just see if the engine shuts off or something like that. Because basically, if there is bad solder joints on the board, and they might be making a good connection sometimes, but then other times they're not making a good connection. So if you tap on that ECM when the engine's running and it shuts down, then that's a sign that it's a bad ECM. Also, if you could go around the ECM and just try to smell if there's a burnt smell, because sometimes when these fail, they actually get burnt on their boards and they'll get burn marks and you'll be able to smell it a little bit. You can also take them apart and look to see if there's any burnt spots. If you do take them apart, be sure to seal it back up properly with like silicone or something like that going around the edges. But the circuit board can also be examined to see if there's any burnt spots. You can also examine the pins where the harness plugs in. Sometimes corrosion builds up on these pins and that will cause a bad connection. And this will basically cause the same symptoms of a bad ECM. So if you can examine the pins and just be sure none of them are bent or corroded or damaged or anything like this, because that does happen sometimes. You can also check out all the harness connections and all the wires running around everywhere, because basically if there's anything wrong inside that wiring, it's gonna cause the same symptoms as a bad ECM. Be sure they're all plugged in good, so there's no damage to them or anything along these lines, because things can happen. Sometimes rodents can get inside of there and chew on wires or something along these lines, and that'll cause issues. There's also a ground wire that runs around all these computer control modules. And if for some reason that ground wire is not good, it can really throw off these computer control modules. So if you have like a jumper wire with like alligator clips or something like that, and you can jumper the ECM to ground just temporarily and see if the symptoms clear, then you'd know it's a bad ground wire. But basically keep in mind, anything wrong with the wiring, open, short, bad connection, bad ground, can cause the same symptoms as a bad ECM. And so that's basically it. I just want to go over the symptoms of a bad engine control module and how you go about telling if it has failed. If you have anything to add, please comment down below. If you have any questions, ask me and I'll try to answer them. If this video helps you, please click like, please click subscribe, and have a good day.